Good evening, everyone. It's great to be here with all of you. I want to first thank Jennifer Ditchburn for inviting me here. She's my date tonight. Wow. I have to say, this is uh, the first time I've done this, and it's kind of a little nerve-wracking. Uh, I mean, a conservative leader talking to journalists <laughs> at the press gallery dinner? This, ha this hasn't happened in 12 years. 12 years. <laughs> wow. And you know, that tells me one thing. I've already won. So thanks, everybody. You've been a great audience. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But since it has been so long, I thought that it would make sense to reach out and ask some other leaders for some advice. Now, Stephen Harper told me not to do it. <laughs> and if I did to do it, to tell all of you to go to hell. <laughs> Elizabeth May. Now, Elizabeth May told me that this might actually be hell. that I should save the Chardonnay for later. <laughs> and my good friend Lisa Raitt, well, she said just to hell with everybody else's advice. Just let her rip, let her rip. And then she said, just remember, the safe word is Omar Khadr. <laughs> anyway, before I begin, an important public service announcement for all you reporters and lobbyists. Rana is the politician. Rona is the hardware store. <laughs> That's pretty important information for the do-it-yourselfers. I mean, I can put together a shadow cabinet, but that's it. But really, on a serious note, it is an honor for me to be here with you this evening, celebrating an institution that is central to our democracy. For a remarkable 150 years, the Parliamentary Press Gallery has held politicians to account and helped guard our fundamental freedoms. So if you will, raise a glass to the real reason we're here tonight, the open bar. <laughs> I really needed that. It's been a tough year. It really has been a tough year. I don't know if you people know, but we lost the last election. <laughs> yeah, it came as a bit of a shock, but I suppose we should have seen it coming. I mean, the brutal personal attacks, the divisive tactics, campaigns of fear and intimidation, and that was just our election team. <sighs> well. Well, let me tell you, everybody seems to have an opinion on where we went wrong. Some people think it was the barbaric cultural practices tip line, while others... <laughs> but you know, really, it wasn't Chris and Kelly's fault. It was simply based on a hotline that we had set up as cabinet ministers to report abuse by Sandra Buckler. <laughs> See, you, that was the gasp by all the cabinet ministers out there. But you know, one great thing was Stephen Harper did take complete personal responsibility and blame for everything. And that was greatly appreciated. But listen, I... <laughs> I do want to say something. <laughs> I do want to say something in Stephen Harper's defense. Bob Ray, keep your fingers where I can see them. <laughs> you know, I really, really believe in my heart that the former PM was misunderstood. I really do. Stephen Harper actually loved humanity. It was just people that he couldn't stand. <laughs> If Mr. Harper could just wait a few more months, it sounds like there's going to be an opening on Shark Tank. And he wouldn't need to show his resume, just his eyes. But you know, let me tell you, I gotta tell you, despite the loss, 
I actually feel really optimistic about the future. After all, I don't work in a newspaper. <laughs> Sorry. You know, actually, come to think of it, this is going to sound a little bit strange coming from a conservative leader, but I actually feel a new kind of kinship with the media. We're not so different. You live in fear of pink slips. We were handed them in Atlanta, Canada. You think the future is paywalls. Well, we think it's Bradwall. <laughs> and hey, like you, we woke up one morning to discover that we're now taking our professional cues from some hipster named Justin. <laughs> but listen, things are finally settling down after a really crazy year. I mean, just look, Pamela Wallen, she's back in the red chamber. Or as she likes to call it, Air Canada Rouge. <laughs> I can't complain though, I really, I can't complain. My job is pretty secure. I collect a government paycheck, I live in public housing. It's the conservative dream, baby, the conservative dream, let me tell you, it's awesome. But I'm not gonna knock Stornoway. I'm not gonna knock Stornoway, it is a great house, it's beautiful. The only disappointment for my husband JP was that it didn't come with live-in nannies. JP, of course, some of you might know, was a professional bull rider for 23 years. Yeah, now that might seem like kind of an odd, you know, a bit of an odd match between the two of us, but really, girls, what more could a girl want than a man that can stay on for more than eight seconds? <laughs> my speech he put significantly right before the oh goodness now of course we have our differences for example the word if he's saying if he's actually yelling it then get upwind now when I took the job as interim leader I promised to do things differently for example I'm not afraid to cry in the House of Commons that's right. Unlike previous opposition leaders who waited until they were in the car on the way home. Right, Tom? <laughs> Listen, I've always seen Mr. Mulcair as a very formidable opponent in the House of Commons. And I know that I'm not alone. Unless, of course, I'm standing in a room full of NDP delegates. I also said publicly that we'd be the strongest opposition party that Canada has ever seen. Now I said strong, and when I said strong, I meant forceful, determined, courageous. So you can probably ease off on the push-ups, Justin. <laughs> Though listen, credit where credit is due. The Prime Minister can hold a plank longer than I've held some cabinet portfolios. <laughs> Of course, all over the world, ordinary people are talking about our Prime Minister. Finally, he has something in common with them. Now, let's be fair. Now, let's be fair. Let's be fair. I wouldn't say that the international photo shoots and the public adoration has gone to Justin's head. But rumor has it that Carly Simon is thinking about recording an update. By this time next year, the Conservative Party will have a new leader. And there are many people interested in the job, many fine people interested in the job. And then there's Kevin O'Leary. <laughs> there's Kelly Leach, I mean, Dr. Kelly Leach. I love her slogan, the last guy just thought he was God. Then there's Tony Clement. Tony Clement. Now, I had some really dynamite jokes here, but as you know, I took a solemn vow, which apparently also includes one-liners. 
Now, let's not forget Maxime Bernier. He's running for freedom. But this time, it's not because he left something behind. <laughs> and then there's Michael Chong. As you know, he left cabinet on principle when we recognized Quebec as a nation, or as I like to call the incident, Meech and Chong. <laughs> You know, it's really, it's got me thinking. It's got me thinking it's probably time for our party to adopt a new tagline. Something that's going to capture our fresh, positive tone. And I wanted to share some of them with you. The Conservative Party of Canada, now at the new fresh lemony scent. <laughs> the Conservative Party of Canada, it's okay, the bad man's gone away. <laughs> The Conservative Party of Canada, 30% fewer nuts. <laughs> we have come, we have come a long way, baby, a long way. We just wiped our opposition to same-sex marriage from the party platform. We've also loosened up when it comes to marijuana, which I understand is a side effect. <laughs> now, just wait till you see our new Dorito tax credit. <laughs> and soon, and soon to be unveiled, our policy on income spliffing. <laughs> now, of course, the half of the room that's actually gonna benefit from that policy is just getting that joke now. But we are adopting a new tone and a new attitude. But I want to take it a step further. I don't just want to change our media relations. I actually want to have them. <laughs> so, so gone are the days of open disdain, thinly veiled hostility, and public scorn. From now on, when it comes to reporters, the Conservative Party is love. Love. So kudos to you, Rosemary Barton. Rosie, you put the POW in power in politics. And Don Martin, Don Martin, you put the ER in power play. Glenn and Stephen, Glenn and Stephen, all is forgiven. You can robocall us anytime you want. <laughs> Craig Oliver, you, sir, are the original orange wave. <laughs> Terry Malewski, never apologize for your facial hair choices, my friend, ever. <laughs> and the rest of you beautiful people out there that make up the parliamentary press gallery dinner, how do you do this? Let me just, like this, yeah. I love you. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. You've been a great audience. And we'll be back again, again next year, or as we call it in uh, conservative circles, doing an Angelo Persichilli. Thanks so much.